Hey everyone, welcome to Trophy Pursuit. Just in here doing some camo laundry as I like to call it with my upwind laundry detergent. It's been about six or eight hunts since I've uh, last done it. And uh, that's about what usually my limit is. Six or eight hunts and I like to come in and, uh, and freshen my clothes up. I feel like it gives me a little bit of an advantage. So today's episode is a great hunt from team member Cody Wright as he chases a giant buck in Southern Iowa. I think you're really gonna love it. It's an exciting hunt. It's up close and personal. And it's just one of them hunts that you're like, man, I wish something like that would happen to me. I think you're really going to love it. Thanks for watching TrophyPursuit.com this week. The hunt never ends. It's absolute. Uh, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in shock. Trophypursuit.com brought to you by Upwind Odor Elimination. Good afternoon from uh, Trophy Pursuit here today on October fourth. Yesterday was an eventful evening. I had 20-some deer come out in the field. But the thing is, the winds are so strong, they're swirling. It wasn't a good spot to be sitting, so I moved tonight to an interior stand. Hoping these deer are going to stage before they come out. The winds got them a little bit skittish, so I'm sitting in here. This is usually one of our favorite rut spots because it's a, it's a good funnel pinch point. Uh, it leads out to an alfalfa field, and there's also believe it or not still green beans out there so this could be really good um, I got in here real early because yesterday I seen movement by 2.30, 3 o'clock so I guess the temps have really got them on their feet early so I guess I got in here early hoping that maybe something transpires can't shoot them sitting on the couch
there's no way I'm going to look for that deer tonight. Just absolutely no way. I seen him walking off over there. He had his mouth open. He's not feeling good. But that is a giant deer. I'm going to call the guys from Trophy Pursuit. And if I can get lucky, um, I can get Chris or one of them guys to come over and help me. That deer is an absolute freaking giant deer. My phone's about dead, but I'm going to get this phone call into Chris. Well, here we are the next morning. It's bright and early. I got a wake up text from uh, Mark Luster. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but he told me I had the wrong number. Um, I imagine he was headed out to the deer stand at about 4.30. So I am gonna get in the truck here and head to town, grab some coffee, maybe a bite to eat. There's uh, no sense in getting in too big of a rush. We want plenty of light. For the camera um i got my good buddy john he's coming down chris duncan is also in route so let's go meet up with them guys make a game plan go in there and find a deer follow along okay so we got the troops here finally chris and derek made it down here got my good buddy john my good buddy joe we're gonna go in here uh go over to the stand where i initially made the shot and start from there follow the blood and see if we can't find him where he bedded down last night and I'm hoping he didn't get up um, so let's go see what we can find by looking at the video it looks pretty promising Here's the setup from last night. This is where I shot that deer about six o'clock last night. He come from the west, just like we wanted him to, right up the trail. Stopped at the base of the tree, five yards. Put the arrow through him, and he took off back the way he come from. I'm hoping he just went and bedded up right where he come from. We're gonna head that way, watch for blood, and take our time. Yep, those were his tracks of blood right here. Right here, Sam, yeah. Put him up down here, then we're stopped. Good. Hey, there it is. There he is, right there. Yeah. He's already eating up with Kenny. He got ate by something a little bit. Not he much, though. Anywhere. He didn't go anywhere, <laughs> no. did he? Holy crap, he didn't even go 40 yards. He didn't go anywhere. Holy crap. Oh. Good job, man. That right side's sweet. He's a nice deer. He's a stud. What an awesome buck, man. All right, guys, well, we got in here. We didn't make it very far, and here he lays. It turns out we probably, we probably could have come in here last night after him. He didn't go, he didn't go 100 yards, but it was so thick in here. I seen him walk off flicking his tail. I knew he was hurt, but I didn't see him lay down. I didn't see him go down or nothing. So, like the saying goes, if in doubt, back out. That's what I did. I did not want to lose a deer of this caliber. 
so I played it better safe than sorry. And it played out good. The only bad part is the coyotes made it to him before we did. That's the chance you take though. But here he is. He's just an awesome, awesome 10 point. I can't thank Chris, Derek, Joe, and John enough for coming in here with me because it's a lot of fun to share a moment like this. I'll remember this forever. And that's another one down for Trophy Pursuit. We're off to a hot start. Big game animals can simultaneously detect obtrusive odors in a matter of seconds. When you enter his world, you're at the mercy of his senses. Eliminate the odor compounds that define your scent identity. Hunt down odors. Hunt upwind. Programming brought to you by the Buck Commander Nano Trail Camera by Wild Game. The new Nano Trail Camera line features some of the smallest cameras on the market today. Boasting 10 megapixels in an 80 foot flash range, Wild Game Innovations Buck Commander Nano Trail Cameras. Small in size, big in features. This morning we're already into the action. Uh, me, Chris, Terry, and Eldon, we spotted a couple decent muleys over the hill and uh, we're getting our stuff ready. Me, Chris, and Terry are going to try to walk around, get up on these muleys and see if we can get a shot. If not, I'll we'll push them off the end of the draw. So, stick with them. little white tail bucks up and comers won't be long and uh, hopefully we come over top one of these ridges and Cody can say mule deer does the same thing <laughs> that's how we're trying to see well those two bucks came you in have to give me about four seconds to get the camera turned on and oh. ready to go oh I didn't even see that. <laughs> you just... right there shoot <laughs> no at least he stood there for a little while oh yeah gosh that was a it's just a matter of coming over. Like say you glass across here and there's all these little pockets and right. you, think you it's just one, don't know. You think it's one ridge and it's ten or little hills. Yeah, there's just know? a lot of little valleys and so. lots of places for them to hide. Lots. Let's keep pressing. It's day number four in Montana. Mid morning. We came here to this big chunk of uh, public property and what we're going to do is just walk these coolies a lot of good areas up on these big mountains up here in front of us where they like to bed so we're going to walk slow glass hopefully we can find one that bonner can shoot
Chris had one crazy walk up into this canyon here. Um, we seen a coyote. We had a small two point, they call him out here, come right up to us. Uh, we let him go, obviously. And I'm in the last draw, throwing rocks and the kick deer out, bust my sling into pieces. And we're just feeling kind of down and out. I only got a day or so left here. And uh, come over the draw. And he's standing right there at 80 yards with another buck. Completely oblivious to a spot. Yeah, had no clue we were here. Rain just rolled down. So. Good man. job, man. Good looking. Look at you out. There he is right there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice one, man. Nice splits on him. That is awesome. First muley here in Montana. Wow, this is bittersweet. This is getting towards the end of the hunt. Me and Chris have been, and Eldon have been working hard trying to get these muleys down. And uh, Terry dropped us off way back there. And we've been walking, me and Chris, for probably three hours straight now. And just came over the hill and just like that it happened. And he was at 70 yards and while you seen the rest, I stoned him and he rolled right down the hill so thanks a lot to terry and chris and eldon and josh for making this all happen couldn't be better stay tuned trophy pursuit want to know why i use a hoyman saw unlike a pole saw it's compact portable lightweight and extends to your desired length plus the i-beam construction makes it rigid and it doubles as a handsaw hoyman the shooting lane saw you know, when I was a kid, my dad bought the farm back that he had grown up on. I love that place. I knew every inch of that place. It, it's my favorite place on earth. That dirt's just rich, man. It just smells good. Man can create some pretty spectacular and awesome things. He don't hold a candle to what God makes. Graff Habitat, there is no off-season. Farming techniques and conservation practices combine to provide an elite hunting property and habitat management service. We use strategic planning and relentless execution to develop turnkey hunting properties. From concept to reality, this is Habitat by Design.